what you guys are committing to today isn't just a document that we sign in another room. It's not this event. It's about a covenant and a promise that you're going to keep with each other because we have a faithful God who keeps his promises to us. guys' journey and what you guys have shared with me about what you've been through, there's a common theme that I see come up in your guys' lives. And whether you're aware of it or not, I wanted to share it with you guys. I see you both being obedient, obedient to a call, and not always knowing what that next step might be, not knowing what the future may hold, but knowing that you are called to take a step forward. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, that was way difficult. <laughs> you look amazing. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be that difficult. Why is it difficult? Just sitting here waiting. <laughs> <laughs> ceremony um, with sand and uh, I'm really excited just to watch your guys' families become one. God started your story before you were even born. If we were to consider you guys books and we took your lives off the shelves and opened them up and started reading them, we'd see from the early chapters how God started to form you in childhood and how he wrote every step that you've taken to today. Casey, you may kiss your bride.
Uh, I have a quote here I'd like to share with you. When one starts a relationship, I don't think they really put a lot of thought into what story it is that is about to be written. You meet, you talk, you look for likeness, you consider comfortness around the person, and you decide if you'd like to spend more or less time with that person. But here's the thing, story is significant for so many reasons. Anybody that knows you too knows that your life has been filled with ups and downs. The truth is, many of the people in this room don't know your whole story, but God started your story before you were even born. If we were to consider you guys books and we took your lives off the shelves and opened them up and started reading them, we'd see from the early chapters how God started to form you in childhood and how he wrote every step that you've taken to today. And that's, we're in a room full of other books with other stories, but today we get to open your two books and we get to see God take those books and start a brand new book. A book that's for just you two. We get to celebrate your guys' marriage. And I think it's important that we define exactly what marriage is because there's a difference between Christian marriage and worldly marriage. Here's the thing. Worldly marriage tells us that our spouse should provide our happiness and our joy. That they are to serve our freedom and make our lives better. But unfortunately, this is a distortion of the truth because Christian marriage reflects the gospel. Christian marriage is about glorifying God and his design for our lives. There's an emphasis on leaving all other earthly relationships and prioritizing one, which is your spouse. It means that the primary earthly relationship shifts and it's no longer a threat to your freedom, but the means by which you get to experience freedom and joy, the way that God has designed it. Now the world would say that you guys are like stuck together, but that's not what this is. This is actually a beautiful picture of two lives coming together into one thing, which is perfect because you guys chose Genesis 2, which I'd love to read right now. Um, Genesis 2, verses 22 through 25 say, In the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. I love how that story ends because last night as we gathered with just the family and, and close friends, uh, we went around the room and we talked about why we were excited for this day. And what I noticed about your families and the people that were here last night, and I could probably say the same about the people that are here this afternoon, is that no one was ashamed. Guys, no one was embarrassed to tell you how they felt about you two joining together. And I want you guys to remember that you have an opportunity to move forward and never be ashamed of the love that you have for each other, the love that you have for these people that you're with, and the love that you have for your family. That is a beautiful thing. Now, there's a second part to this. I, I didn't tell you, but I wanted to share some more scripture. Um, They'll probably hit me later. But Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. Have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross." Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every other name. You see, Genesis 2 and Philippians 2 both call us to a lifestyle of service. And that lifestyle of service is to each other. We talked in our meetings about what could maybe trip up people when they consider what marriage looks like in I just want to urge again that you guys consider the opportunity you have before you to lay down your own lives and say, I'm going to serve the one I love. Because what you guys are committing to today isn't just a document that we sign in another room. It's not this event. It's about a covenant and a promise that you're going to keep with each other because we have a faithful God who keeps his promises to us. 
when I think about your guys' journey and what you guys have shared with me about what you've been through, there's a common theme that I see come up in your guys' lives. And whether you're aware of it or not, I wanted to share it with you guys. I see you both being obedient, obedient to a call, and not always knowing what that next step might be, not knowing what the future may hold, but knowing that you are called to take a step forward. Guys, you have an opportunity to continue that posture of obedience in marriage. And that obedience isn't a punishment. That obedience isn't something that locks you into things you don't want. That obedience is actually a joy-filled, glad step that you can take because it's fueled by something that's so much greater than us. And that's the love that we get from God himself. I wanted to share with you guys that wives should respect their husbands. They don't tear them down. They, they honor them in every conversation they have. They assume the best in what he's doing, and they love sacrificially. And husbands love their wives like Jesus loved us. So wives respect your husbands, and husbands love your wives. And remember what I told you. That doesn't mean anything other than you have a high call on your life, and you have a high call on your life and your role in marriage. Now, we're going to share today your guys' vows. You're going to make commitments. And again, I want you to remember the people that are standing up here with you. The people that are witnessing this event are also the people that you've invited into holding you accountable to what you say today. And this giant room of people are all people that will walk with you and say, hey, I remember what you said. And that's a really cool thing because community and community that cares is going to get you guys through some stuff. I'm sure there's married people here that will tell you that there's never a problem in marriage ever, and they are telling the truth. Um, <laughs> that's a true thing, right? Uh, you're going to need community and people around you, so lean on them. When we met, we talked about 1 Corinthians, and I wanted to share that again and challenge you guys to consider this as you state your vows. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 say, Love is patient and kind. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, and it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. At this time, I have a couple questions for you guys. Are you ready to say all of your vows to each other? I'm kidding. You just have to say I do. <laughs> Casey, you're going to go first. Do you receive Lindsay as your wife and bind yourself to her in the covenant of marriage? Say it. If so, say I do. I do. Do you promise to love and honor her in true devotion, to rejoice with her in times of gladness, to grieve with her in times of sorrow, to keep her in sickness and health, and to be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I do. Lindsay, do you receive Casey as your husband and bind yourself to him in the covenant of marriage? I do. Do you promise to love and honor him in true devotion, to rejoice with him in times of gladness, to grieve with him, in times of sorrow, and to keep him in sickness and health, and to be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. I do. You guys have chosen to do a unity ceremony um, with the sand, and uh, I'm really excited just to watch your guys' families become one. So we're going to watch you guys pour sand in it this thing. 